first I would like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity and my mentors Dr. Dina Dayalan and Raj Shekharan for giving me this opportunity. Today my topic is on gustula anderson classification of open fractures. Does it depend only on the wound size and its recent modification? When my registrar calls and tells me that there is a type 3B open fracture, tibia in the casualty, it could be any one of these from an easily treatable open wound to a barely salvageable open limb, barely salvageable limb. What do I infer from this call? I know from a type 3B, it is a large wound and it will require a soft tissue cover and the vascularity is intact. However, I would like to know more about the fracture status and the functional tissue status to plan my treatment and discuss the outcome with patient and relatives. In the next one hour, we will be hearing more about open injuries, their classes and their types and scores. So let us know what is a classification system and a scoring system. A classification system distributes the variable into various classes based upon their common attributes, while a scoring system awards numbers or letters depending upon the degree of or the level of the variable assessed. In 1976, Gustilo and Anderson proposed their original article based on a retrospective and a prospective analysis of 1,025 open injuries. Type 1, where a wound was one less than 1 centimeter long and it is clean. Type 2, wounds were more than 1 centimeter associated without any extensive soft tissue damage. While a type 3 wound was an open segmental fracture or an open fracture with the extensive soft tissue damage or a, a traumatic amputation. There were special categories such as gunshot injuries, form injuries and vascular injuries requiring repair. At the end, they concluded that there was an increased infection rate with primary internal fixation and primary closure in type 3 wounds and they advocated no internal fixation in open fractures. In 1984, Gustilo and Mendoza modified their classification as they felt that there was a varying degree of prognosis within the type 3 group itself. And the major determinants were severe soft tissue injury, periosteal stripping and arterial injury. Based on this, they divided type 3 into three types. Type 3A were wounds with adequate soft tissue cover over the fracture site, despite extensive soft tissue damage. Type 3B were wounds with extensive soft tissue damage with periosteal stripping and bone exposure and they were usually associated with massive contamination. Type 3C were open fractures associated with arterial injury requiring arterial repair. They concluded there was an increase in complication rate with the increasing severity of the injury. There have been various modification in Gustula Anderson classification since then. First to modify was Bride and Spicer. He divided Gustula Anderson classification into four types based on energy, level, fracture pattern, and soft tissue injury. First two were simple fractures with no skin loss or muscle injury, while type three was associated with skin loss and devitalized muscle. Type four was gunshot and form injuries. Major, uh, se second major modification was done by Trabulski. He bought in the 10 centimeter threshold as the descriptor to differentiate type two and type three injuries. Type two injuries were defined as one to 10 centimeter long, while type three injuries were defined which were greater, usually greater than 10 centimeters. So this modification is usually attributed by everyone to Gustilo, but this was described by Trabulski. Over the next five, over the last five decades, various modifications have happened to Gustilo classification. First was by Bride and Spicer, and in 1984 by Gustilo himself, and Giardus modified in 1993, followed by Trabulski in 1994, and various authors have used descriptors to describe vascular injuries in type 3 fractures, type 3 B fractures, which did not require any vascular repair. However, none of it gained popularity, and the three major, uh, two major modifications were by Gustilo himself and by Trabulski et al. So, when we classify, uh, it is not uncommon for us to classify a wound to type 2 pre debridement and to it becoming a type 3 after debridement. But Gustilo did not describe when to classify the fracture in his initial publication. However, in a letter to author in 1995, he has emphasized that uh, grading or a classification is only provisional until the debridement has been completed. And Gustilo is used to, for communication between the clinicians and for education purpose. So it has been analyzed by various authors 
for inter-observer agreement, and they have found that it only has a moderate to poor inter-observer reliability. It is probably due to use of subjective descriptions such as extensive soft tissue injury, significant, peri significant periosteal stepping, and massive contamination. So when we see an open wound like this, which, is, uh, which exposes the joint with a, mass, with a major intraarticular fracture and a injury to the muscular tendinous unit such as patella tendon, though this is a major wound, but because of its location, which allows us to close due to lax skin, this wound is termed as a type 3A. But a simple linear wound over, uh, over a simple fracture with no muscular tendinous unit uh, injury is termed as type 3B because we are, we, it will need a flap cover. So the treatment decides the class in which the group, in which the fracture has to be classified. So this classification becomes more, of, more often a retrospective than a classification to guide treatment. So a wound such as this, which is large, more than 10 centimeter, over the fracture site with no bone loss and muscular tendinous unit injury is also class, is classified as type 3B while a similar wound with the bone loss and the patella tendon loss, which will affect the functional outcome, is also termed as type 3B injury. So this classification is mainly based on the size of the wound and the presence of skin loss, and it does not consider the other factors of injury, such as bone and muscle injury, which affect the functional outcome. And it does not address the age, comorbidities, and other injuries associated, associated with the fracture. And it also does not address the question of salvage or amputation. So in conclusion, Gustula Anderson classification is the most popular and widely used. It predicts the risk of infection and complication. However, it does not, however, it is based only on the size of the wound and the presence of skin loss. It does not address the other components of injury such as bone and muscle injury. It does not guide us on treatment such as salvage or amputation when uh, timing of intervention and the type of intervention. And it has a poor inter-observer reliability. Thank you.